The rain was on and off this Saturday at PK Park, but Oregon's offense was on as they score six runs to defeat the St. Mary's Gales in game two of a four game series. Oregon football fell in a stunning upset last year in Tempe, Arizona to the Sun Devils. Last night, the nightmare continued as Oregon women's basketball also lost their second game of the season to Arizona State in Tempe. But tonight, Oregon men's basketball got some revenge here in Matthew Knight Arena with a 78-69 win over Arizona State. I'm here with Brett Taylor. Brett, what did you see from Oregon out there tonight? It was a dominant team win for Oregon women's basketball this Sunday at Matt Knight Arena as they defeat an unranked Buffalo team 102 to 82. Fed into that. And I think that took us a little while as a unit to kind of settle down. Coach Kelly Graves acknowledges that emotions got the better of him in the first half as he received a technical foul halfway through the first quarter. I earned it, but I don't think I've had one in about three years. Every once in a while, you just need it. The last event of the season for Hayward Field will be also the last event at Hayward Field before it undergoes renovations. That will be the NCAA National Championships June 6th through June 9th. With Duck TV Sports, I'm Michael Streit. The team improves to 4-0 this season as Sabrina Inescu has already recorded two double-doubles and two triple-doubles. Next weekend, they head to Moraga, California to play UC Riverside on Friday and St. Mary's on Saturday. With Duck TV Sports, I'm Michael Streit. On a cold and blustery Saturday at PK Park, the Oregon Ducks baseball team lost 5-0 against the Florida Atlantic Owls. After facing three top 25 teams in a row, the Oregon Ducks will face an easier matchup this Tuesday at Matthew Knight Arena against Hampton. Reporting with Duck TV Sports, I'm Michael Streit. The Ducks may be playing a lot of basketball over the next two weeks as they will be participating in the preseason WNIT, which opens Friday, November 10th against Cal State Northridge. Reporting from Matthew Knight Arena, for Duck TV Sports, I'm Michael Streit. The Ducks improve to 3-1 in Pac-12 play. Next week, they go on a road trip to face the Washington schools. Last week's road trip against Utah and Colorado didn't go as planned, but they now have a three-game win streak that they'll hope to push to five next week in Washington. I'm here with Brett Taylor from Matthew Knight Arena, Michael Streit, Duck TV Sports. A local Oregon sports reporter is trying to give the children of Lane County their first experience at an Oregon men's basketball game. Reporter Michael Streit has more. Matt Preem is a familiar face in Eugene sports media, covering Oregon football, basketball, and recruiting as a writer for 247sports.com. Last February, Preem and his two sons were involved in a car accident. Um, and my oldest son suffered a pretty catastrophic injury um, to his brain and also to his neck, and then he had a lacerated liver. After nine months of recovery, the Prem family is lucky to continue normal family activities like trick-or-treating on Halloween. Prem says, quote, the support from many people in our community has helped and continues to help me and my family get through a very difficult time in our lives. I wanted to come up with a way I could say thank you and also do something positive and impact other people, especially other kids in our Eugene Springfield community. Prem started a GoFundMe page with the intention of bringing underprivileged youth in the community to their first Oregon basketball game. Bream has doubled and could triple his original goal with over $2,600 raised and three weeks remaining to surpass his most recent goal of $3,000. Bream is excited about the opportunity for children to experience an Oregon basketball game in Matt Knight Arena and hopes to be a role model for his children. I definitely think I was raised that, you know, you help people that need help and I, was, I needed a lot of help and a lot of people helped me and so it's pay it forward, you know, you do good things for people and good things will happen to you as well. With Duck TV Sports, I'm Michael Streit. To help Matt Prem reach his goal, you can visit his Twitter where the GoFundMe is pinned at the top. We sent Michael Streit to get a story of a walk-on who thought her tennis career was in the past. If you find yourself in an Oregon women's tennis match watching star seniors Shweta Sangwon and Daniela Nasser, don't overlook Taryn Fujimori. Taryn started tennis at the age of nine and played competitively all throughout high school. As high school came to a close, Fujimori was prepared to put aside tennis and even passed up playing for the club tennis team at UO. Earlier that summer, Fujimori did contact the coaching staff about being a walk-on. After only one day of practice, she found herself in the lineup. Well, when Coach Courtney called me, that was just like crazy for me. Like, I like, 
but like never have thought I could have played, like even walk on. Coach Courtney Nagel says her excellent attitude has allowed Fujimori to stay on with the team. Um, she's been incredible. I mean, she's a, a hard worker. She shows up with a smile on her face every day. She does everything you tell her to do. So for us, it's been really fun because every day we see a little bit of improvement in her. Just last week against St. Mary's, Fujimori and doubles partner Allison Mulville were one point away from victory. Although the match is not officially recorded as Fujimori's first career win because it was left unfinished. Although the full starting lineup for Oregon could return at any time, Fujimori is grateful for the opportunity. I don't know, it's just crazy that like I get to wear an Oregon uniform and I get to play. With Duck TV Sports, Michael Streit. Hearthstone is a competitive card game that can be played on a laptop or phone. In Hearthstone, UO is able to compete in a much smaller varsity division where they face other teams that are officially sanctioned by their schools. The team started 3-3 three three in the Spring Varsity Championship, but then proceeded to win 10 straight matches to become Spring Varsity Champions. It's crazy. I mean, especially after fall term not doing too well, um, we kind of went into this with low expectations of ourselves, and this is it's it's actually kind of surreal. And like, we go back and we watch the videos of us playing, and there's two thousand people watching, or you know, however many, and it's just kind of it feels kind of crazy. It all happened so fast. Oregon's team also received a bye through the first three stages of the 2019 Spring Collegiate Championship. The team traveled to Texas and played to an online audience of over seven thousand viewers. They did, however, lose Game 5 and were eliminated with the noble distinction as one of the top four collegiate Hearthstone squads in the nation. With two juniors and a freshman on the team, UO Hearthstone is excited for next fall. I'm just looking forward to next year. Um, <laughs> I mean, just getting so much scholarship money this year is insane. It's like, if nothing else comes of Hearthstone, it's been an amazing ride. Um, but I'm looking forward to next year trying to, to repeat success. With Duck TV Sports, Michael Strait. Oregon women's basketball has clinched sole possession of the Pac-12 regular season title for the second season in a row. Similar to last year, Oregon wrapped up first place down in Arizona. Washington State sealed the deal with a touchdown drive to take the win 34-20. Celebrating the historic win, Cougar fans stormed the field in a sea of crimson. Oregon baseball has nine games left in the regular season as they prepare for a weekend at home against the Utah Utes. Next weekend, the number three ranked Ducks fly to California for the Mary Nutter Classic, playing six tournament games with double headers on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Women's soccer closes the season with a three game homestand, starting with Arizona State next Thursday and Arizona next Saturday. Oregon fell to the bottom of the Pac 12 standings after a tough road trip last weekend. Not only is Lily Burden a standout middle distance runner, but she has another passion as well. Julia Lobina has more. The rock climbing gym at the University of Oregon opened with the remodel of the Student Recreation Center in 2015. Kristen Gloystein explains the different types of rock climbing courses offered and says why she hopes that more students get involved. Reporter Mariah Mills has the story. The Oregon softball team will head to Berkeley, California for their final regular season series against the California Golden Bears. Oregon sits atop the Pac-12 standings tied with UCLA with only three games remaining. Oregon softball returns to Jane Sanders Stadium this weekend. For Duck fans, it may feel as if the season is getting just getting started, yet four consecutive weekend tournaments mean the Ducks have already played 18 games. At last week's Judy Garman Classic, Oregon lost by just one run to a top-five Florida squad and Cal State Fullerton before losing 8-0 to Auburn. So far this season, Oregon softball has been a tale of two pitchers. The sensational Jordan Dolly has a 2.35 ERA this year, and Oregon is 9-2 in games that she starts, outscoring opponents 66-34. Outside of her starts, Oregon is just 2-5. Expect to see play plenty of Dolly when the Ducks open up Jane Sanders this weekend against Oklahoma State.